thank you. Um, we're just gonna, is it, yes, as I say, well, as you said, it's a two-parter, so I'm just going to give a quick 10-minute introduction to like, the national perspective, showing some of the work that I'm doing in my role uh, for Historic England, and then Joe is going to be talking about the really important stuff of how we're actually implementing it through the Herald Project. So, my role, I'm the um, Research Resources Officer for Historic England in the Capacity Building Team. One of my responsibilities is developing <coughs> research frameworks, reference resources. The main thing and the main direction for my work is supporting the MPPF, supporting the planning system. It's getting the best knowledge and accessible information into the system so we can support the experts, the experts being the local authority curators, uh, the contractors in making the decisions as, uh, as part of the planning system, and then getting the best research and public benefit out of the planning system. So it is, in many ways, this is linking to the whole ATRs and the whole OASIS that Joe's going to be talking about in looking at how we create knowledge from information, and as part of this is supporting sectoral collaboration and inclusion. So we've got this nice graph that, uh, in fact, I can't take credit for this. This is Edmund Lee's brain on, on a slide. <laughs> in terms of the information and knowledge cycle, I just waffle, Ed draws. So, um, <laughs> but really this is just looking at how, how the part of my work fits into all this. So it's very much the, it sort of goes around the cycle. So the planning decisions, what we'll to the SEC, the investigation, how that is being supported by the written schemes of investigation, where the information goes, the OASIS, the HRs, the Portable Antiquity Schemes, all those data. So it's the data information. And then the information coming out, so in terms of the reports, the publications, and it's feeding into this sort of drum shape at the top the knowledge creation. And so the knowledge creation is the synthesis, is bringing all the information, all the data together, and trying to get meaning out of it. So this could be in research frameworks, it could be in research agendas, it could be things like the, the Roman Rural Project, it's those big synthesis projects, it's using the data information and creating something. And then it is cycling it back into the system, and very much in terms of capacity building, so, in fact, the team I'm in is that we, we deal with a lot with this in terms of the training, the guidance, and the research resources. So those three key things that are there to support the expertise that's in the sector. And this support the sector, that's all of you lot who are in local authority, contracting, the commercial side that are dealing with the planning system. Oh, and then they come through into exactly at the assessment of significance, the planning decisions. That part, Joe's going to deal with, so I'll move swiftly on. So this is what I'm going to be just be quickly talking about and some of the ideas of how we're doing it. It's very much an introduction because we're starting off on some of the projects. So this is what I mean, and I thought I'd do an image. This is the, the data, the ingredients, the information, the events records, the HR records, the sites and monitors records. It's those map with all those dots. What does it mean? And it's, that is the whole synthesis into a chocolate mayonnaise cake. I first of all looked at that and thought, ooh, no, not very nice. But actually, I thought maybe that's quite good. Some people like chocolate mayonnaise cake, some people don't. And I think maybe that's the same with research frameworks. So actually, it's that sort of <laughs> bittersweet relationship. We have to be honest here. <laughs> And then I thought, oh, a knowledge cake. Nice, excellent. But it's that whole thing. It's combining the ingredients into these syntheses. And also we're looking at the direction. So it's what do we want to do next. It's the research agenda. It's what do we want to find out about and how we're going to do that. So it's sort of the strategic ways forward. Hugh, am I right for time? Uh, we've got about six minutes. Oh, that's oh, slowed oh, down now. I'll have a little break. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> right. One of the ways we're doing it is that we are funding uh, the updating of three regional research frameworks. Uh, I'll show you in a minute which ones, but we are moving forward. And moving forward, we've taken into the, the, the survey that Pi Tate did a couple of years ago. We've looked at the SCARF survey. I think Emma is here somewhere. 
Uh, we've looked at all different aspects. We've also got another project that's been looking at how community-generated research can bring into this system. So we're looking at how we can develop it. And I put these as sort of the buzzwords. I'm not sure if you use buzz anymore, but these are the things that are driving it forward. That they are online, updatable, they're integrated into a system, i.e. the three of them are going to be worked out together. We're going to run them together. They're going to be meshing in. They are usable, which means accessible. They can be used. They're useful. They're not a pain. They're not going to be 600 pages long and you have to read every page to get something out of it. It's going to be much more targeted. Oh, targeted. Exactly that what I say. We're looking at where do we need to do it now and next, the priorities. So we're not having a generic, let's just redo all the Roman chapters and all this across all the three regions. We're looking at where do we need to update the most. We need to be much more prioritised in this. We need to look at where is all the development, high development areas. Where do we actually need the help and the support for the planning system and to make that the experts, the commercial units and the local authorities, where is that sort of support needed? So that's what these things will be doing. We are running them, right, as I say, that's, <laughs> I've run on to myself, so that is what I'm saying. So they're led by user needs, they're more accessible, they're targeted. So we're starting the first thing, there's two main things for this. One is building the community. So we're doing, uh, we're arising the northeast, the northwest, the east of England, at the moment, as a pilot project for the last year or so, the East Midlands has been looking at how they're doing it online and using wikis. So an important thing is, is that this is the, the research communities. We're going through as a regional, because that's the way we're managing them, but the actual information and the actual targeting will be much more of a local focus. But we wanted to have that sort of, to manage that whole process rather than having 80 research uh, frameworks for HERs and all those local authority areas. So it's building that. So the community is important and the community is moving on from all the reports that we've done recently and everything that there is is engaging as well as our traditional sort of triumvirate, the three areas, local authority curators, contractors and academics, but also the community <laughs> groups. Also looking at history, local history groups, not just archaeology, and also looking at the building recording groups. So we're trying to make it much more inclusive, looking at how those groups can be involved in the process. We've been talking about it in the other session, the bottom up, recognising people's local research agendas and bringing those into it and actually trying to create these frameworks. So that's the community, and that's important. That's one aspect of it. Quite a difficult aspect and especially when we're looking at stuff doing it online and how to bring together, but that's one part of it. And the other thing is building the infrastructure. And this is very much part of what, what I'm involved with, with, with Ed, Edmund Lee here as well, is that how are we going to do this? So we're looking at a, an online platform. We're looking at a wiki platform. Don't worry, it's not Wikipedia. It's not anything like that. It's looking at an idea of how we can have these online resources that can be updated, that can be maintained, that can actually be sort of reflective, they can be reactive, and trying to keep them going. But what we want to do is we want to be standards driven so that they all are going to be able to search across them. So the three different regional research frameworks, they'll all be linked through. At the back end, they're linked. At the front end, it's up to those communities. Two minutes two slides <laughs> <laughs> and then importantly and what Joe's going to be talking about is linking it to Oasis and the ADS so it's having this information to knowledge this access to the information as part of the heritage information access strategy the higher strategy and where we can actually capture that information and then we can begin the whole process of the synthesis and then putting it back into the um, into the system and my final slide it's just a quick thing to say that we're also looking at reference resources. So these are the typologies, reference resources, and we funded three projects this financial year. One is the National Zoological Reference Resource, enhancing the Worcestershire Online Ceramic Reference Resource, and the Clay Pipe for Field Archaeology Project. So these are making these reference collections online and more accessible so that we can use them. And I think, over to Joe.
Thank you. Thank you. Right, so I get to talk about uh, Oasis and Herald and the things that we're doing as part of the Herald project. The first thing I'd like to do is just explain that Oasis will always remain as Oasis. Oasis is the data collection form, data collection tool that accepts um, historic environment event reporting. The Herald project is the project to redevelop the Oasis system and as part of that, build a thing called the ADS Library, which is going to be the incorporation of the British and Irish archaeological bibliography and um, the Grey Literature Library, as held by the ADS, that's fed from Oasis with the reports there. Um, it's building that and, and the new um, Oasis project. Okay. So how does a redeveloped Oasis fit into this research cycle? we've been talking about. Well, what happens at the moment is Oasis accepts data and sends data out to various different places. So it accepts it in from contractors and people doing excavations and in, uh, investigations. It sends it to the HERs, it sends it to the um, various national bodies, it sends it to the, the data is repurposed um, by um, various systems there's a Historic Scotland one here for the discovery and excavation in Scotland and the radiocarbon dating form, that's an administration system for their radiocarbon dating. Um, it's used there. As I said, it feeds the Grey Literature Library um, at the ADS and it also feeds the Geophysical Survey database. Now this is all the transfer of information. What it also does is transfers information to certain research projects. And this is where it's starting to do at the moment what we're hoping is going to happen with these research frameworks. It's facilitating the, the um, process of turning the information collected by OASIS and turning it into this knowledge. It's also used by uh, archiving online archiving system ADS-EZ and it goes through to MEDIN and data.gov. So as I say, how will the new OASIS system be different? Well, at the moment, it's largely archaeological contra contractors who are supplying the information to Oasis. And that's as part of the planning system, um, largely. So it's written in uh, WFIs and it's written in briefs where they're, where they're produced. But what we're hoping to do with the redeveloped Oasis system is make it more user-friendly to different areas of the archaeological and historic environment community. So targeting community groups, historic building specialists who feel that the current system is very archaeology focused. We get lots of archaeology building surveys, but we don't get them from um, the, the more building side of it, the architecture side of it. Um, we don't get reports from academics. Not very much, anyway. And we also get some from post-excavation specialists, but at the moment there's no um, facility to attach the, the event that is the post-excavation event with the original event that produced the thing that the specialists are analysing. So that is something that we're going to look at in the new Oasis system. So essentially, we're looking at more projects from a more widespread group of sources. And another thing which people have asked for is that um, HERs are able to start their own projects in OASIS. So the HER would start the project and then the person doing the work for it would go in and complete the, the record within OASIS. And that fits with the workflows that exist in some areas of the country. So a new OASIS will have some extra fields. And for those who have good eyesight, you'll be able to say, you'll be able to see that it says research frameworks here. So what we're hoping to do is collect a small amount of different information in the, um, in the OASIS form. So what we're looking to get is a, a short um, explanation of the research outcomes of a project and also where projects have been specifically targeted at particular parts of research frameworks to actually have that and record that that project has that connection. Now, you could say that that's 
not a welcome thing. It's adding more information that people have to put into Oasis. And one of the main things about Oasis is that, uh, or one of the things we hear a lot, is that it takes a long time to do. However, we're hoping that the time taken to fill in these extra parts will actually be saved by the better design and the more up-to-date design of the form. So the way that, the, um, that a project would be entered, the location and the event information is selected first of all, and it's done more intelligently. So at the moment, you have to put in a grid reference, you have to put in a district and a parish, and you have to put in um, potentially a postcode as well. What we're hoping, all these things can, can pre-populate each other, depending on which one's put in first. Things like that. And also, we're looking at the, um, another thing that happens is that reports that come in are not the same, they're not actually the right report for the record, which is uh, surprising how often it happens. Um, but what we're hoping to do is check the content of the report against the information that's entered in the OASIS form and just tie these things together and basically do that data checking at that point. So we get a smiley face. But how does this, how do these events get back into the research frameworks? How does that um, knowledge creation happen? Well, the ADS library, this is going to be fed, as I was saying, from Oasis via what is currently the Grey Literature Library, or otherwise known as the Library of Unpublished Fieldwork Reports. I think that's its official title. Um, it's also going to be have the data from BIAB, which is currently not very well, but we're hoping is going to be back in its current um, uh, back online in its current form soon. Um, it's fed from reports that come in via um, archives that we hold at the ADS. It'll be fed from automatically from large uh, journal publishers, um, archaeological journal publishers. It will also be fed from um, the monograph type publishers like Oxbow and BAR. Volunteers will also potentially do uh, an element of abstracting. There will be the possib possibility for small publishers to be able to go in themselves and enter new publications as they go. So the, the beauty of the current system in BIAB is that it's got all those regional things that you don't find through library catalogues and all the things like that. We're hoping to retain that use um, or usefulness of, uh, of the ADS library as it will come um, by allowing smaller publishers to enter their own records as they get, as they do more new publications. So as we put this all together, this is sort of what we get. We've got Oasis collecting the information in sending it to the HERs, the HERs doing a um, data transfer back and forth. You've got the information from OASIS feeding the research frameworks. You've got them also doing that, or OASIS information also doing that via the ADS library. So obviously what will happen is somebody will upload something to ADS, uh, to OASIS, excuse me. Uh, the report will be there. It will go automatically into the ADS library and at that point, that library record will become the current record. And that's what will feed the, uh, the research framework with uh, a sort of synthesized version of the events which have happened which are relevant to that research framework, be that by period or by location or, or whatever it is that's relevant. Okay, and as you see around the edges, you've got the different, the other different syntheses as well, which will relate into this grouping as well. So, uh, the ADS library will be available from autumn, this autumn, and the redeveloped OASIS system will be available in 2018. Oh, and that's me being click happy. There's uh, just some information for keeping up with developments. Thank you very much.